It was my business. I was really good at that business it's called construction. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in the history of our country. We ended catch and release. We built 561 miles of border wall. We got Mexico to send 28,000 soldiers to our border, free of charge. Everyone said, you didn't get them free. I said, I got them free. By the way, I used to say, Mexico's going to pay for a big piece of the wall. Mexico paid much more than that. They gave us free soldiers, free military. They did things for us. Because that I could do. You're not allowed to do that. They can't pay for our wall. No mechanism. But there was a mechanism where they could give us soldiers, 28,000 soldiers. And you know, it was very interesting. Uh, some of you have heard the story, but I went to Mexico. One, a woman in the State Department was terrific, but she was a lousy negotiator, actually. But a terrific woman. She dealt with Mexico for 25 years. And she said, sir, you're not going to be able to get this stuff. I went to Tom Homan. I went to Brandon Judd, the Border Patrol. I went to these great — I said, what are your top — give me a top ten list. And they gave me a top ten list. No more catch and release. No more — a lot of things. We want the war. We want the this. We want that. We wanted a lot of different things. And the woman looked at me. She said, sir, we've been after that for 25 years. As long as I can — you'll never get it. I said, yes, we will, 100 percent. Sir, you won't be able to get it. And I like the president of Mexico. The former president, I guess, he's going to be taken off for somebody else has taken his place. I'm sure I like the person that's taken his place. We'll get along just fine, but I like. So what happened is I said, no, no, they're going to have to give us 28,000 soldiers. That's a lot of money. I also want a thing called remain in Mexico. Is that a good idea, remain? Remain in Mexico. You know, Biden ended this. When he ended remain in Mexico, and I built all of these hundreds of miles of wall. In three weeks, we could have thrown up another 200 miles of wall. Three weeks. And that's when I realized they want open borders, because they didn't want it. And they took the wall, which was exactly what the Border Patrol — it wasn't my design. It was a design by Border Patrol. I, frankly, would have liked concrete plank going straight up, but you had to be able to see through. A lot of different things. They wanted it to be steel, concrete, and rebar. I built everything, even the paddle on top. I hate the way it looks, but it's called an anti-climb paddle. It makes it almost impossible, unless you're a Mount Everest climber, to get over the wall. These guys would scoot over the wall like it was nothing. But that's an anti-climb paddle. We did everything they wanted, and we built it. And it was so much more than I promised to build. And then I said, we need more, because people would go out on these sketches, and we had to fill in the certain areas that were hard to get legally from eminent domain and various other things. So what happened is we're building the wall, a lot of people coming in, a lot of death, a lot of destruction, a lot of people pouring in, but peanuts compared to what it is. This is peanuts. And I got Mexico. I said, you're going to have to pay for the soldiers free of charge. They, they laughed at me. They said, we're not doing that. I said, you have to. I'm sorry. We're not doing it, sir. You have to be. Here's a guy, handsome guy, beautiful representative. He laughed. He said, <laughs> sir, we're not giving you soldiers. Why the hell would we give you soldiers? He actually thinking to himself, we've been ripping off the United States for years. Why the hell would we give them soldiers to protect their border? We're not doing that. We want them out of Mexico, these people that are coming up. A lot of criminals, a lot of bad people are coming through. So I said, no, no, you're giving it to us, 100 percent. No, 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 sir, I'm not giving it to you. I said, listen. 100 percent that you're giving it to me. We're not giving it to you, sir. You're giving it to us. He goes, no way. I go, way. And that's — so we left it. And I said, here's the story. You're going to give us every one of these items. I have 10 items. And remain in Mexico is a big one. But no more catch and release. We call it catch and release in Mexico. We had catch and release in the United States. We catch a criminal. And we release the criminal in the United States. What the hell? And then we say, come back in six years for a court case. Only the really dumb ones came back. Most of them just — that was it. They were in our country. We had them. But some really dumb ones came back. I'm here to uh, go through a court case. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. So what happened is I said, no, you're going to give it to us. So he said, why are you so confident that I'm going to give it to you? I said, here's why. Because I have before me a document, and I'm signing it now. And if you don't give us 28,000 soldiers immediately to protect our border from people pouring into our country, I am going to charge you a 25 percent tariff on every single thing you make, including all of the cars, because you stole — you know, they stole 32 percent of our car industry, by the way, in case you don't know. 
And every car made in Mexico that gets sold in the United States is going to have a 25 percent tariff. And if it doesn't take place within a month, it's going to go to 50 percent and then 75 percent. And he said, sir, may I please take five minutes and call my president? I said, you may. He comes back. Comes back. Sir, it would be a great honor to supply you with 28,000, sir. Give my great honor. It would be my honor, sir. It would be my honor. And we had a great relationship with Mexico, and we had the safest border we've ever had in this country. Ever had. And then as the wall got built longer and longer, but we could have added another 200 miles, and they didn't want to do it. And then they ended up selling that expensive wall, very expensive. They sold it for five cents and 10 cents on the dollar for scrap. And that's when I said, these people really want open borders. It's not even believable. But we did a hell of a job, I'll tell you, and uh, we'll do it again. And we're going to do it again, bigger, better, stronger than ever before. It's all going to happen. It's all going to happen. And we have no choice. And if we don't get elected, we have no country any longer. I really believe that these people, they're crazy. These people, what they're doing to our country is insane. You have to see, some of the people coming into our country are, these are hardened criminals. These are hard, tough, they're prisoners. They make our prisoners look like very nice people, okay? These are hardened criminals are coming into our country. And now you're seeing the problem. You saw where they beat the hell out of two police officers in New York, in New York City. And then the DA said, let them go. That's okay. But he goes after Trump. Goes after Trump. You have to be a violent criminal. If you're a violent criminal, you have no problem. Under Biden, millions of illegals are now pouring into our country. And these include terrorists. You know, you have a 100 percent chance of a major terror attack in the not-too-distant future. What? It's a terrible thing to say. I went four years with no terror attack. Four years. And I could never talk about it. We call it the ban. Remember the travel ban? We cleaned up the name a little bit. But we didn't take people from countries with the massive terrorism and the attacks. We don't want our shopping centers blown up. We don't want our people destroyed. We don't want dead children where a family will never be the same. We're never going to do — we're not going to do that. And we did a job, but I never talked about it. I couldn't talk about it because I didn't want to say about how well we're doing on terrorism and then have a terrorism attack the next day. So I never got to talk about it. But the day I left, I started talking about what a great job we did. Thousands and thousands of people are coming in. And you notice they're all men. And they're all between 18 and 25 or 26 years old, practically all, meaning like military. Think of it. Very few women. I don't want to disrespect you when I say few women, but that's the way it goes. Sometimes I got to tell it like it is. Not a lot of women. Men are coming into our country at level, and a lot of them coming in. 29,000 from China over the last few months. 29,000. They're coming in from Yemen. You know, the bombing has already started. When I was uh, thinking about doing this, the Middle East was being bombed to hell. And I said, you know, it's not necessary. We can do it in a much better way. They have to respect your leaders. I looked yesterday. There's bombs going up all over the place. Everyone's fighting. It's a whole mess. We had uh, a great, great leader, Viktor Orban. You know who he is of Hungary? Viktor Orban, he said, there's only one way that this problem is going to be solved, because the whole world is blowing up. You look at Ukraine, you look at Israel, you look at the whole Middle East, you look at everything. China's talking about going into Taiwan. But Victor's a tough leader and a smart man and highly respected, but he's tough. And he was interviewed recently, and he said, there's only one way it gets solved. Trump has to become President of the United States again, because people <laughs> respected him. I knew exactly what he was talking about. When I'm president, instead of trying to send the state of Texas a restraining order, I will send them reinforcements. They're going to get reinforcements. They're doing a good job. And I'll use all necessary military and law enforcement resources to defend the United States of America. We're going to be very strong.
And within moments of my inauguration, we will begin the largest deportation operation in American history. We have no choice. We have no choice. We have no choice. And we're going to start with the very bad ones, because the very bad ones are very, very bad. They're worse than anybody you've seen. And we know who. You know who knows who they are? Your police force. Your local police know exactly who they are. They know them by name. We have to respect our police. Our police have done a great job, and they have not been given the kind of respect that they deserve. But we're going to let our police do their job. Did you ever see — I mean, we have a phenomena going on now where a department store — for years, they wanted to go into a city, a location, and they finally got it built. They spent millions of dollars. And now this new phenomena where hundreds of people rush into the store, mostly younger people with masks and everything. They rush into the store and they walk out with television sets. And I mean, I saw one the other day walking out with a refrigerator. He's got this massive — I said, he's a pretty strong guy, right? Can you believe? And the police are standing there and they're not allowed. It's not that they don't do anything. They're not allowed. They say, you will not do anything to stop this. We can stop that problem. This is a new phenomenon. Nobody's ever seen it before, where they send 300 kids into a department store, and within 15 minutes, the entire store is wiped out. Millions and millions of dollars. Then they close the store, and the neighborhood becomes a blighted neighborhood. The whole thing, it's like a chain. It's a chain effect. And it's a horrible thing that's happening. There's no respect for our law enforcement. And our law enforcement could have respect very quickly. And you could stop that phenomena in one day, in one city, if you got tough. If you got tough, the whole country would see it, and it would stop immediately. Despite the worst border crisis in U.S. history, crooked Joe Biden just tried to ram through a massive open borders bill that would allow nearly 2 million illegals per year. Did you see that? 5,000 people a week. Some people said 5,000 people a day, but I think they meant 5,000 a week. We're allowed to come in, dispense unlimited numbers of work permits for illegal aliens to steal American jobs. The unions are going to be out of business. I'm telling you, if the Teamsters endorse Biden, here's the good news. Most of the Teamsters are going to vote for me anyway. But — and the unions. And workers, just workers. But you give illegal taxpayer-funded lawyers, so they have millions of dollars in this agreement, in this deal, which we, by the way, killed. I think we killed it. I think it's dead. But you can never say it, because bad bills always come back to life, because these guys make a lot of money with bad bills. But they give millions, tens of millions of dollars — it's down there — to lawyers to represent the illegal immigrants that come into our country. It's, it's not even believable, some of the things. You ever notice they come off? Everybody has a cell phone. They come in, they get off a bus. There's always some nice person greeting them. I don't know who these people are. They, hello, welcome. Do you ever notice that? They have like these people. Nice women, beautiful women. Hello, it's so nice to see you. The guy looks at it like he's going to rip her apart. Hello. He never saw this. He, nobody ever shook his hand before. Hello, here's your cell phone. Here's your this. Here's your credit card. Would you like to stay today at the Waldorf Astoria, or would you like a Trump hotel? <laughs> no, it's crazy. It's crazy. Our soldiers are great veterans. I met some of the incredible parents of, of some fallen soldiers in the back. Incredible. They have the pictures on their — on their chests, just beautiful, beautiful kids. We have veterans that are living like dogs on the streets. And we have illegal immigrants who are living in luxury hotels with cell phones and credit cards. And that's going to all change very fast. What's well, going to change? Because we're not allowing people into our country anymore unless you come in legally. So it's going to change in that way. In fact, one of the bill's top Democrat architects admitted just yesterday that illegal aliens are, quote, the people that we care most about. They care. The Democrats care most. He said, these are the people we care most about. Because you know why? They want those people to vote. Now, 
The good news is they cheat so much, they really don't need them. That's why I was never a believer. They cheat with ballots, and they drop ballots, and fake ballots, and a hundred different things. They got more ways of cheating. It's a way of life. It's become a way of life. Our elections are so rigged. But just in case, they're going to be voting. Those people are going to be voting. They try and get them registered. They don't speak a word of English. You're going to register here. Oh, oh, I see. But they have no idea what's going on. They want to get them to vote in our movement. We believe the highest priority should be law-abiding Americans, not illegal aliens. We got to take care of our soldiers. We have to take care of our veterans and our police and our firemen, people that have loved our country. I mean, you see it over the last few days. I don't know what it is. I've been saying, I wonder why it doesn't seem like, because the fake news doesn't want to report migrant. We call it migrant crime. It's unbelievable what's going on. And now, for the first time, you're seeing migrant crime. These are tough people. Again, many of them come out of jails and mental institutions. They're not just sitting there looking for a job, learning English and let me get a great job. These are tough people. These are hardened criminals in many cases. And now you're seeing migrant crime. When a policeman goes up to them, they laugh right in the policeman's face and then punch him in the face. These are not innocents. These are tough people. And we're taking them by the millions. We're taking millions of people, millions and millions. We have no idea who they are, where they come from. We're not doing it anymore. We're not doing it anymore.